When you think of recurring Columbo actors, who springs to mind? Maybe Cassidy, Culp, and McGowan, the big three killers. Maybe supporting players like John Finnegan, Bruce Kirby, or the ubiquitous Mike Lally. Well, we've got someone else for you, someone who essayed almost every possible role on the show and whose impact has never truly been explored. Today on Echoes of Columbo, we meet the real Mrs. Columbo, Shira Denise. How does one even begin to tackle the legacy of the series' most oft-appearing actress, slash singer, slash model, slash 33-year wife of Peter Falk? Denise is incomparable in the world of Columbo, where she tackles roles both major and minor, innocent bystander to blackmailer, murder victim to murderer. Her involvement in the show begins inauspiciously in 1976, when she was Falk's girlfriend, playing the minuscule role of Molly in Season 6's Fade In to Murder. By the time Season 7's Murder Under Glass was filmed, Denise was Falk's fiance. They would marry after filming Wrapped. Here she shines as Eve Plummer, the unsuspecting and travel-obsessed girlfriend of the episode's murderer. Oh, and the Greek island? Yes! She's billed second overall, right below future Bond villain Louis Jordan. The return of Columbo in 1989 saw Denise return as well, this time as the villain's wife, Vanessa Barsini, in Murder a Self-Portrait. These first three parts are her innocent period, with her characters mostly uninvolved in the episode's murder plot. Kicking off her guilty period, 1991's Columbo and the Murder of a Rockstar sees her as the first billed actor. Her character, Trish Fairbanks, speedily figures out the crime You killed her, didn't you? and successfully blackmails murderous lawyer Hugh Crichton. And she also provides the vocals for the episode's featured song, Closer. Denise gets to play a murder victim in 1994's Undercover, where she's criminally inclined art gallery owner Geraldine Ferguson, and she reaches the pinnacle of her Columbo career with A Trace of Murder in 1997, playing co-murderer Kathleen Calvert. You'll notice that she finds her niche in the show very quickly. Does it please you? She's almost strictly ornamental in her first appearance, although I like when Shatner's character is revealed to wear shoe lifts and she gives an oh really. Eve Plummer is perky and silly, befitting the comedic tone of that episode. I've been a fool. Interesting. How long have you been a fool? With Vanessa Barsini, she truly hits her stride. Self-assured and sharp-tongued, you have to wonder how much of the role is autobiographical. A former model, married to a temperamental artist, managing his career with a steady hand. Shrewd and tough, but playful and alluring, Vanessa would set the bar, Barsini, for Denise's roles on the show. In fact, I think it's her best performance. You know your trouble, Max? All you want is all there is. If it had stopped there, I believe her legacy in the Columbo universe would have been assured. But the part of Trish Fairbanks starts to muddy the waters. Denise holds her own as an actress, but the steely, no-nonsense performance is very similar to her last one. And was there no other promising actress who could have brought star power to such a plum role? Geraldine Ferguson finds her again on familiar ground, exchanging zingers with Falk and then ending up as a surprisingly graphic corpse. And Kathleen Calvert, a role that should have been her crowning achievement, breaks zero new dramatic ground. She generates no sympathy as the put-upon wife, quickly falling into the panicky female conspirator archetype we've been seeing since Prescription Murder. You said nothing could go wrong! It's clear that Denise plays a particular type very well. Other recurring players do the same. Robert Culp is always seething with rage. Bruce Kirby is always a straight-faced curmudgeon. From self-portrait on, you just know what you're gonna get each time. Alley cat. Money grabber. Rat. Witch. Bimbo. Shrugs. The similarities in her parts go deeper than just her performances. She provides a truthful alibi during her innocent period, and a false alibi during her guilty period. In one episode, she manages an artist, in another she manages an art gallery, and she has a tendency to betray or abandon the murderous men in her life. Eve abandons Paul Gerard, Vanessa leaves Max Barsini. Leaving how? What leaving? Trish blackmails Hugh Crichton. As your wife, I can't be forced to testify against you. Kathleen rolls over on Patrick Kinsley. That son of a bitch. You got that right. Unlike other recurring players, it's hard to get a feel for Denise's reputation among Columbaneers. She's unique in that 
all of her major acting credits are in Columbo, and she does pretty good work alongside heavyweight actors like Louis Jordan and Dabney Coleman, not to mention Falk himself. So the real issue is not if she can act, but whether she'd have gotten such prominent roles if she wasn't married to Peter Falk. And I hasten to say I'd ask the same about other late-period Falk associates, like director Vincent McAvity or old buddy John Finnegan. In her first three appearances, she fits right in. They're secondary parts that suit her strengths. Self-Portrait has always been one of my favorite episodes, and for years I had no idea that Vanessa Barsini was the real Mrs. Columbo. Rockstar Onward, however, is where a charge of nepotism seems more accurate. David Koenig's excellent shooting Columbo reveals that casting Denise as Trish Fairbanks was part of a deal between Falk and producer Alan Levi, who agreed to her in exchange for his own wife getting a part. That son of a bitch! You got that right. Her continued prominence in leading parts is basically when Columbo undeniably transitioned from being a prestige, star-attracting program into a Falk-dominated club, casts and crews filled with friends and familiar colleagues, and in this case, his own wife. As time went by, the decision to cast her got increasingly out of place. There are hints throughout A Trace of Murder, for instance, like this. His wife, Kathleen, is... is friend of our daughters. Or the weird lingering shots of her legs and body, that the part of Kathleen is supposed to be a much younger woman, similar to her own roles in the 70s. Denise is a beautiful lady, but was nearly 50 here. The part just isn't right for her. Wouldn't it have been more fun to see her on Columbo's side for once? Couldn't she have been the alarm company lady or the victim's lawyer? Heck, swap her in for the cop who finds the missing cat. Okay, that cat officer. Right now, sir? On the other hand, it's only appropriate that she graduated to full-fledged murderer. It's a fitting tribute to her unique trajectory and to her part in Falk's life as well. As the real Mr. and Mrs. Columbo, they were obviously a devoted, loving couple. And for that reason, I believe most critics have shied away from honest evaluations of her part in the series. When all is said and done, what is the legacy of Shira Denise in Columbo? I don't know where all this is going. If anything, I'd say she's sorely underappreciated. Nah, you talking. Ask a purist Columbo fan for their favorite recurring player, and they'd probably name Vito Scotti or Fred Draper before Shira Denise, but they don't come close to matching her prominence or impact. Because she first appears late in the show's original run, and does most of her work in the revival era, she's often just left out or forgotten. That's a shame, because she's probably the most prominent repeat actor in the revival shows, providing a sense of continuity that the original run had with Culp and Cassidy. Even if she wasn't a perfect fit for every part Part, she brings a real spark to her exchanges with the lieutenant, a certain street-smart edge to her characters. Her acting, and heck, even her singing, is up to the high standards you'd expect of the show. And as a behind-the-scenes presence and influence, she's unmatched. The amount of support she must have given Falk during the show's later years is not to be underestimated. In fact, I'd say that without her presence, we'd have far fewer episodes to enjoy. In the end, I think that's the best tribute we can give to the real life Mrs. Columbo. Vinny, that's tough. I'm a double orphan. I was adopted. And then my adopted folks, they died too. Double orphan.